Well guys, today me and Meek are gonna be reviewing some spark plug wire boots. Now what on earth would you need these for? Well, in a normal case, you probably wouldn't with all the new coils and stuff like that, but you see with things like this 2017 C7, what they do is they have small little spark plug wires that go from the coil down to the spark plug itself. And the problem with that is they go in between the header, which I'm sure you can see if I zoom in right here. See that? See how it's like right next to it? Now I've ceramic coated those headers to help with heat, but that I still don't think is gonna be enough. So, I mean, this is gonna be a really in simple install video, but I'm gonna still show you how to do it. So, first things first. I wouldn't go off the spark plug side. It's just a little bit harder. We're gonna grab it right here, we're gonna wiggle, and it should just come right off the coil. Just like that. Now that we have that off the coil, what we can do is open up our spark plug boots there, and we're gonna slide one over this. Now another thing you can do if you'd like to, don't get any water in here, but go along the wire and go ahead and clean it a bit. Now you can order these in different colors. I went with white because they're more malleable and you can move them around easier. Apparently, which I got to feel a little bit of, if you get the ones that are dyed, they're a little bit harder to maneuver and work around the wire, and I didn't want that. I wanted it so that way I could just slide it on and it would stay, but also it would be like able to move easier with uh, any movement of the engine, I guess. But let's show you what these look like. If you want, just so you know, you can get them in blue, red, and black. Just expect them to be a little bit more stiff. There we go. That's the word I want. Okay, I'm gonna go grab some stuff, quickly clean this up and show you me sliding it on. Like I said, just take a cloth, you can give it a quick wipe. It's an engine bay, so you can spend a little bit more time cleaning it up. I've already done that with this one, but I'm gonna probably do a much better job once I go ahead and decide if I'm going to keep this intake manifold or if I'm gonna supercharge. So again, these are the product right here. Let's see if I can show you that product number right there. Let's go ahead and pop this open. It's like the not so easy way to do it, but oh well. Let's go ahead and do this and pop out one of these socks. So again, it just goes like so. We just squeeze it on over top. If you're worried, maybe you had your hands all dirty like, I don't know. You can, of course, go ahead and uh, make it so that uh, you put on some gloves. Oh, let's see. Is it going to play hard to get out? We'll see in one second. Okay, it's coming. There are going to be so many jokes, I'm sure, in the comment section if people actually watch this video. But, like I said, just keep forcing it in until the tip comes out the other end. Let's see how close we are. Oh, we're almost there. You can feel the rubber right here. Uh, actually, I might be able to just pull this through now. There we go. So. Make sure it goes down, and the most important part that you want this to cover is down here. Because this is the one that's gonna see the most heat. So make sure you just get it down, and around, and over. There we go. Now that that's gone down and over, you can go ahead, come up over here, feel for it, and slide that boot back on. And now, with this on there, it's going to protect that wire a little bit more from heat. Now, just so you know, this is the easy side. <laughs> I should mention that. I'm gonna show you the harder side afterwards because with these LT motors on the passenger side, you're gonna have to pop up the fuse box probably to get at it. But let me, Move on to the next one and we'll go from there. Literally this side is super, super easy. You should be able to pop these out. Maybe this one, the farthest one will be a little bit harder with your fingers, but I'll see if I can back this out and show you here. If you're worried about scratching up your car, make sure that, let's say you have these little tassels, see how they have aluminum pieces? Tuck them into your hoodie 
And then what you can do is just by grabbing an empty black garbage bag, put this right here. Now you can, of course, use something thicker like a blanket. I'll let you do it. But of course, just careful. And then, like I said, just grab and pull these back off and start sliding these boots on. There's nothing extremely hard about doing this. It's just patience and time consuming. If you're worried about lineup point when you're trying to do this blind, just try to line up that white dot. And if you do, you should be able to just do that. And it'll line back up. Like I said, white dot towards you if you're looking right at it. Another cool trick, start it by bending these things like a banana. Like just make it big and then like that. If you bend this thing like a banana, then what you do is you follow the curvature of that spark plug wire and you should be able to just line it right down the banana. Next thing you wanna do, go grab yourself a 10 millimeter socket. We need to disconnect the battery. If you're like me and you got a battery tender, make sure you unplug it. Come over here, pull your carpet up, and right there, take the negative off right there. So loosen that off and wiggle and pull it up. You're gonna have to shove something in between that terminal so it doesn't touch the battery anymore. Go on ahead, as you can see it's sitting right here. Now if you look right here, you're gonna see that little black wire. Whatever you do, don't put too much pressure on this wire. If you break it, you'll get a low voltage sign on your dash when you turn it on and that'll be because you broke the eyelet on here you'll have to strip recrimp and then put it on for you to get rid of that light next take your finger lift the handle just like that there'll be another one on this side take your finger lift it there do the same to this side lift it with your finger same on the other side again Pull this away, pull a little lever, lift this big lever. From there, we can see what ones are in our way. Ah, we might not have to remove all these hoses. Let's see. You can see, we just do that. And then when we half cock these back, let's see here. Lift a little bit. I believe we should be able to half cock these back and these should release. Let's see. There. There. Now, the next thing that we need to do. Lift this bugger up. Again, might have to get a little flat blade, but see how this sinks in onto here? We have to press on this. Press that in and then lift this cover up. And then we'll have an exposed TED mill right here. See if I can just, there, just like that. Lift it up and around there. Like I said, that might be actually a 13. We're gonna loosen this off, make sure this doesn't fall into the engine bay. We're gonna lift both these posts off a little bit at a time, so that way we can free this. Like I said, go ahead and make sure you're on off, just like that. She, depending on how tight it is, and this should be tight. If this is loose, that's actually bad news because that means every bump you could have been jumping your fuse box without power, which isn't good. Put that up here so you don't lose it. And then you're gonna have to lift these off. Now we might have to actually sink this back on for a second, so that way you can get it. So we'll sink these kind of half back on, and then you should be able to lift these up and off like so. There we go. Now that that's free, we'll try to half cock these again. And we'll see if we can lift this. Yep, just like that. See how it's coming up and out of the way? Aha. Come on, a little bit more. This is what you're looking for. Aha. All right, we've freed this. Go put this somewhere safe. Flat blade. Just minorly slide it in here, just like that. And watch this. It's free. Or it should be. Anyways. Just do that with all the, oh yes, you have to lift it up and out of the groove, sorry. Let's show you one more time. So, this, slide back, and when you slide it back, you'll see that there's some grooves in there. You have to slide it till they line up and there's no, there's the kind of grooves, it's in here. You have to line them up so the pins come out. 
do that with all of these. Again, take a picture if you're worried or just watch my video. That'll tell you the exact color. Some people won't even do that. They'll just do it with their finger. I was just doing it with the flat blade because I wanted it to look, I don't know, half professional. There we go. And last one. This one we might need the flat blade for. Let's see. Oh, nope. Lift up and out. Okay, these are all now free. Is this one makes me alive. There, that one's free, that one's free. We have a 10 mil here, take that one out. Take this one out and take this 10 mil out. So one little black one there, one black one here and one black one here. Take those three out, put them up here. Next, flex this and open it up. You can see it's got a little flex tab. Free this guy. Now you're gonna do the fun project of working this around here. Oh, and free this pipe, there we go. It's gonna try and hug it probably, there we go. Put that one so it's like this, work this one up, make sure this one doesn't try to work itself back in, and lift. There we go. And just remember, like I said, the color orientation and free these buggers from trying to go back in. Ta-da! Hey look, a whole new spot for you to clean. Put this off to the side. And look at that, you can reach all four of the spark plug wires. Go ahead, grab your boots, and well, you know the drill, just grab, wiggle, and slide them on. And if you want to, you could put a little bit of conductive grease on there, you don't have to. This is also a good time if you have never changed your spark plugs. You would grab the other end of this. You might have to do this gently with a pair of some sort of plier or channel lock. And you'll pull these back. Underneath here is your spark plug. Put a 5.8 spark plug socket on there. You'll know because it has a rubber grip. Loosen the plug out. Put the new plug in if you want. And then put it to about 11 foot pounds. That's about the max because this is a, an aluminum block. So just be nice and careful. Again, white dot, line it up on the nubbin, and then listen for the click. There we go. Heard that? There was a double click. Even though these clips are making a little bit of noise, you can hear that double click. And then I already got that one to do the clicking, so I won't be able to show you that one, but two more to go. Do they pass your test? Are they good? As long as they pass German engineering, I'm happy. As you can see over here, make sure these are all compressed in. Once we know that they're all tight, let's go over to why I put the boots the way that I did. So you can see, I put the boot socks, whatever you wanna call them, with the stitching up. The reason why is I don't know what the stitching will hold up against with the heat down there, because that's gonna be way hotter than up here. So I decided to put the stitching up here and keep it that way. It was a hard decision because this is technically like three layers thick. And I was like, oh man, if the stitching holds up, one, it fits a little tighter on the metal piece down there. But yeah, it's not worth the risk. Really, if these even do half of what the temperature uh, resistance is that it's rated for, I'll be happy because all we're trying to do is get a little bit of heat away from these wires because the last thing you want to do is melt your wires, right? From doing your headers. So now that we've got them all the same way, we've gone, we've made sure these are all sucked in nice and tight and we know that they're actually on the nub, try giving them a pull down. They shouldn't pull down. If they do pull off immediately with a little bit of tension, then they are not locked on properly. Okay, now that we've gone ahead, we've done that. Go and grab the plastic piece. Let's work that back in here. Pretty much goes flat down. Just make sure you're careful with this barb here and that. This is your coolant line and this one right here, it goes to over there. So if you really, you're just too scared, go ahead, press that. You just press the gray in, slide it out and you can move this even more off to the side. You can even do it on this side. You just compress the gray, like I said, and pull back. Either way, I didn't have to do that. I'm just trying to show you just in case you're worried. Work it around here, as you know. Make sure you work this back on. We'll do that afterwards. I wanna clip these all back in first. Just go ahead, slide into the grooves, and slide forward. Again, slide it into the grooves. 
just like that and slide forward. Ta-da! Now that you've put them in the grooves, slid them forward, they're not gonna go anywhere, go ahead and get these screws in. Now, these screws, you should not be going crazy with them. You should literally be going, I'll show you. If you want to give them a little bit of tension, but there, like really, you don't have to go too crazy with these. If you want to throw the ratchet on, nothing bigger than this and do it with one hand. Again, no real tension. I'm sure you felt that when you took this box out. Anyways, put the other two on. Pop this back open for a sec. Wrap that back around. And we should be able to seat that just like that. There we go, she's in. Now that that's seated in there, Go ahead, bring this into here. Again, just careful with this line. We'll just lift it on top. And this needs to move so the posts are in there. You'll see the posts just line up on the hole down there. These are gonna get in the way, so just careful with them. This, they aren't gonna quite reach yet, so I'm just gonna put them off to the side. And they're gonna still try to get in my way. And then we just move these handles just a little bit and they should start to drop into place. There we go. And as we start to sink them down, keep these out of the way. There. And just like that. See how they've kind of half locked in on that post down there? You'll see that they'll half lock in. And then as you separate them, it'll sink back in. Don't sink this one in yet. You can go ahead and sink that one. The reason why I said don't sink this one, well, we still need to put this on. So go ahead, lift that on top. And this one goes on top of that one, just like that. And again, our faithful ratchet. And one hand only tighten it up mm, there we go mm, right one ogadoga anyways we go ahead slide that back down into our final position same with this one and they're locked in you can't lift them anymore fuse box is installed go ahead make sure this is clipped back in if you have a clip here Ta-da, ta-da, that one's all pressed in. We're good. Don't close the hood on your tools, but do take your 10 mil and go back and attach your battery. Well, all in all, like I said, not really for looks, but they still do look good. And again, you can get them in other colors, but I really like this natural color. It looks great in the engine bay and it just adds a good look to it. I mean, I don't even know how well it's standing out on the video, but in person, especially since I ceramic coated those a burnt bronze, oh, it looks amazing. Anyways, if you want those natural colored boots, this is the Performance World SKU, and they're about 50 bucks Canadian, I want to say. Either way, you can get them off Amazon too, but again, can't really speak for any of the Amazon stuff, but you can get them in different colors. Hope this helped you out. Thanks again for watching. Press a like if it did and subscribe for more.